Yes. Uh, can you just talk about the game and give it a little overview? Well, with our game last week, we had a rough game against Rockhurst. And um, as we looked into this, uh, going back and looking at the film, some of the things that we did didn't do well, some things we did do well. Um, we try to take some positives from it and build toward these next three games that we have. Obviously, we didn't offensively in the first half. We really struggled converting on first downs. We had three third and ones and a fourth down that we did not get. That was close. And, um, you know, the, the bad thing about not getting those, you know, other than prolonging our drive is we put our defense back on the field. And, um, Rockers scored their first two possessions on a 15-play drive and 11-play drive, which is a credit to them. There's huge drive. At the same time, our defense really made it earn it. So I was proud of them in that respect. But uh, we did keep our defense out on the field too long. It ultimately led, you know, led to them scoring some points in that second half. Um, the game, uh, what we need to take from it is learn what we can do better going into these next. We have a three-game season left here before the playoffs. and, and um, what we can take from it, what we can get better and improve on this week. And, and um, also, you know, capitalize on what we did well. We felt like there's some points we drove the ball real well between the 20s, but we weren't able to convert toward the end zone. So those are some of the things we took from that last game. Yes? Um, what's your tough loss against Rockers? What's the message to your team going to be? And then uh, what things in, will you take into consideration well, the message we'll take from our team, um, that, you know, from this game, and we covered it this weekend as we were with the kids, you know, this weekend and after the game and then practice yesterday, as we told them we have to use this as a way to prepare us for this upcoming slate of games that we have. And we just played two of the top teams in the state back-to-back -back weeks. And, um, you know, we have to use that as a tool for us to get better and improve going into these next three weeks. And you mentioned Columbia Rockbridge. You played them in two weeks. We have Park Hill this week for a homecoming game. And um, we're going to, you know, we'll treat this like any other week with our next three games, our Park Hill, Columbia Rockbridge, and Blue Spring South, and then um, the, the playoff game after that, week 10. And um, what we'll do is look at our personnel, look at what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and continue to improve on those things just like any team in any sport would do. Yes. Uh, what were some of those things that you guys were able to take away from that this Rockers game that you're going to want to use to build on the next? Season? Well, sure. And I look at with Rockers and their defense is very sound defense that we went against there. So offensively, what we can take away, uh, we're looking at different ways that we can continue to prove in our passing game, which we've struggled in. We've ran the ball pretty well this year, but you know it was disappointing for us and that we were able unable to convert some third and ones and fourth and ones and. Um, and I know our kids and our coaching staff were disappointed in that because we know it could have had a bigger, you know, big impact on the game if we we're able to do so. And so that's been an emphasis coming into there. Defensively, we talked all week about not giving up the big play. And for the most part, we didn't. We gave up some big runs, you know, some runs that were around the 20-yard, but not a big uh, home run run like that, that uh, Blue Springs got to get. So I was proud of our defense in that respect. They really made them earn a lot of their drives. Now, there were some times, um, you know, a stat within our defense, and I, to I just talked to our kids this morning when we were in meetings this morning and told them our defense did not allow Rockers to score when they started the ball on the other side of the 50. When we made them earn it the entire field, it was tough. And when we gave them the ball, you know, at midfield and let them go in, they're going to score. And you just can't give teams short fields. Those, those are some of the lessons we'll talk to them about and hopefully be able to carry over to these games we've got coming up. Yes? Uh, looking ahead to Park Hill, what are some things that they do to develop uh, Park Hill runs the ball really well, and they have two running backs. They have a senior and a sophomore that they use, and uh, they're they're based out of a you know an I back power run game. They do a good job throwing the ball. Uh, they have a returning receiver um, that, that was our leading receiver from last year that's back on their roster, and uh, this is very efficient within their offense. This year they've switched. Last year they had a they ran a three three stack defense, and they had a nose guard that ended up going to Michigan as a recruit. And since he's left, they're back to a four three with four down linemen. So. So it's a little bit different for us in terms of our game plan. Um, they beat us in overtime last season. And um, so we have to prepare a little bit differently because they're using a different defense off that. Yes? Uh, how are you guys planning to bounce back from a loss? You know, it's one of those things that when you lose two games in a row like we have, and, and uh, you know, I told our coaching staff to really kind of look and gauge where our kids are at, and I was proud of them. They came in. I didn't see any heads hanging or anything. I think they understand where they need to get better, and as a staff, we understand where we need to get better, and, and we're in this, to, you know, to, to improve each week and get a win this Friday. So this is a, um, you know, extremely young team that we have. We, you know, for most of our um, – 
we had a we had a, one of our senior linemen get hurt during the game, and you know for the rest of the game, we, the only seniors we had on the field were Harry Greeley and Matthew Zombo on offense, and um, defensively a lot of the same way with only a couple seniors out there and. Um, you know, I, I was proud of them. They bounced back. They're pretty resilient. And I thought our seniors that were out there really led and did, did things well. Jackson Gilly played just an outstanding game and um, was on it to the very end. And uh, fighting and leading and keeping everybody positive. I was really proud of how those kids did. Yes? How has JB and the sophomore team done? Well, the sophomore team hasn't played this week. Uh, JV lost last night 22-7 to to Rockers. And uh, um, the opportunity was at home. I got to watch quite a bit of that game. And um, some good things happened in that game. And um, we're pleased with how our kids performed in there. They were able to get a touchdown in that fourth quarter. Uh, they, the Rockers scored on one of the last plays of the half to go up. We had a really strong first half. Uh, we we're just able to convert during the first quarter when we had some times with it down there. Yes. What are you really going to uh, try to execute going into Park Hill? Like, what weaknesses do you see in their defense? Well, if you look at their defense, um, they're very good against a the run. They have some kids over 300 pounds they use against the, you know, on the on the defensive line, and I've seen them use a lot of different players in that and rotate different kids in. Their linebackers fly to the ball good, and I think we have to, we have to just be good in our base offense what we do, execute our rules from what we do with them, but be able to also just take advantage of our opportunities. We have um, been disappointed so far in our efficiency within our play action game and we talked this week and we feel like we run the ball pretty well. We have to be able to have great play action off that. Those have to complement each other and they haven't so far as this year as a whole. And we know going in for the rest of our season, that's somewhere we have to um, improve on and become more efficient in that part of our game. Yes? This week, well, coming week, is there anything that you guys are doing Sure. You know, we don't really do anything differently from a practice standpoint, but there is just a lot of neat things to go in within our community and our town and um, our school. There, you know, with it being a spirit week this week at school, um, just a lot of fun things that surround. Uh, one of the great things about high school sports, be able to have a, a week like this with a lot of fun around, based around our game on Friday night and be able to have alumni and community members come back to the game. I know we'll have a huge crowd on Friday night against Park Hill. Um, Thursday night, um, one thing, you know, before we split high schools, we had the parade that went downtown, and we don't have the parade anymore. We have um, a carnival down at our JV field just for the whole community, and there's a ton of fun things to do. We did it last year, and it was great and very well attended. And I know um, that night they announced the King and King candidates, and the team gets introduced, and um, there's just some neat things that go on on Thursday night. So, and it goes from 5 to 8 this Thursday at the JV field, and um, it's just one of those things that I think is really neat that our community does, and a neat opportunity for our team to reckon, you know, be recognized in front of that. Yes. Oh, well, you know, you look at it, we hope they all perform well. And um, I, I, uh, with Matthew Zombo, he had a rough week last week. And then he earlier, he was injured most of the week last week. And then um, I know he was disappointed. You know, he played every snap of the game, offense, defense, special teams. But he was disappointed in some of the, he wasn't able to break a long run and stuff like that. And I'm ex excited to see him get back to full strength and play well. Um, defensively, uh, we had an outstanding performance from our middle linebacker, Devin. In Houston had 15 tackles and was just all over the field. And he's the kind of kid I, I feel is going to continue to play better. This is really he's only played six varsity games in his career, and um, we we feel like just every week he's an, as you know as, as he continues to practice well and do things right uh, throughout the week in preparation, his games are going to continue to prove. So he's been a big leader for us on that. Yes. What are your playoff aspirations? Well, right now, what we're excited is we're going to have a playoff game, and that's going to be week 10, and uh, we look at the standings each week, and they're starting to kind of, um, you know, with three weeks to go, you can kind of see where some of the teams are falling within those standings, and right now, we what we what I talk to the team about the most is not who we play, but that if we are able to finish in that top four, that we would host a playoff game week 10. Right now, October 5th, this Friday, is our last home game on the schedule, and um, you know, I'm Tell, you know, telling our team over and over again, we have to you know, take it one game at a time, but we know the more we win, the better chance we'll have of having a playoff game at home versus us traveling somewhere week 10. Yes? Uh, would you like to talk about that injury you mentioned earlier? Maybe any other injuries that could affect uh, the games? Yeah, we did have some injuries this week, and uh, Ben Laughlin hurt his knee. He's had an MRI on that. We do not know the extent of it yet. Um, 
he had the MRI earlier this week, and we're waiting on it to get read. So he's that's one, and he's a senior starter on our offensive line. Started all last year, also, and a great player and a great leader for us. And we're hoping the best for Ben, and that we get, you know, we'll we'll know quick if it's going to be something he can bounce back from quick, or if it's going to be a long-term thing. Brady Newland has had a separated shoulder. He's been playing with most of the season, and Brady starts both ways for us at wide receiver and at safety. And um, he had four tackles on our first drive, you know, last week, and and just a extremely tough kid and uh, playing in a lot of pain and um, he's going to be day to day right now on how that shoulder is coming back in so those are our two main injuries I uh, mentioned Matthew Zama we feel like last week he was injured um, and um, missed some practice time was able to get back to you know practice on some on Wednesday a little on Thursday and back in the game but we're hoping he's back to full strength so those are pretty much the extent of our three injured players right now yes well, we have this really two different things. We have conference standings, we have district standings, and within our conference, um, our, a lot of our conference is in our district. But the good thing about our new playoff system is we are guaranteed a playoff game week ten, and um, we're getting seated for that each week in standings with those other eight teams, which is our conference plus Rockers and Joplin are in our district, and. Um, so week 10, we'll have a playoff game, which is a great thing. Um, different than what we've had in the past when in terms of districts where only one or two would come out of your districts, depending on what the situation was. Uh, this week we'll have one matched up week 10. So it's going to happen, and right now we're just playing for whether it's home or who we play. All right, I want to thank everybody for coming in today. Another great week at Blue Jay football. Thank you. TV is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, a proud sponsor of Liberty School District. At Hawthorne Bank, we understand the importance of strong community in a strong school district. We also understand the importance of strong financial future for our school district's families and for our local businesses. Hawthorne Bank, with you every step. And by Jackson Hewitt. For all your tax needs, personal or business, rely on tax professionals at Jackson Hewitt and Liberty, a full-service tax preparation professional. Jackson Hewitt, 